G'day guys, Josh here again. I uh, thought I'd do another quick video around how to adjust the wastegate actuator rod on the facelift turbo. Uh, the same process should work for other turbos, but you'll need to check the specification. Why do we need to do this? Um, occasionally when we install a new turbo or even from stock, the wastegate actuator rod can be uh, not quite aligned properly. So the ECU is expecting a certain voltage called the EWAG, uh, electronic wastegate um, adaptation value. Uh, and it's expecting a certain value when your car's cold and when your car's hot. So uh, generally for the facelift turbo, it's expecting around 3.8 volts when it's uh, cold. And then when it's hot around 3.6 or 3.7, uh, I checked mine and mine was around 4 volts when cold um, and what this means is that when the ECU is um, opening and closing the wastegate to control boost um, it's not fully uh, aligned properly and it can result in over boost, it can result in all sorts of issues. Um, just helped out another person in the end community whose uh, wastegate voltage was 4.8 volts. Um, a quick check and he noticed that the, uh, the nut on the actuator rod was actually loose so very quick and simple test is you just uh, get an OBD device. I've got the EK1 Lite. Uh, I'm sure it will work on others. Plug it in whilst your car's cold. Um, power cycle your car a couple of times and then see what the voltage is. So I'll, I'll walk you through the process now. All right, so we've got the car accessories on. Generally what's recommended is you power cycle the car a couple of times. Two. All right, three times. All right, we've now plugged in um, my scan tool. As I said, it's an EK1 light, but this should work with other tools. Uh, gauge, and we're gonna go down and look for the EWAG value. All right. As you can see here, adaptation value for EWAG is 3.8 uh, volts. My car is currently cold, so that is perfect. Um, and obviously I've already done this on my car. Um, but if yours was four volts or maybe 3.6, both of those would warrant that you need to adjust it whilst the car is cold. As I said, you're looking for that to be about 3.8 uh, volts, sorry, when your car is cold and then maybe 3.6 to 3.7 when the car is hot. Um, so let me show you now how we adjust that. Uh, you'll need a 10 mil ring spanner or socket. Uh, so let's go under the bonnet. All right, under the bonnet here, um, basically what we need to do is we need to remove this uh, heat shield. Uh, it's a 10 mil socket. So undo that, um, peel the shield back. Uh, also, if you remove your engine cover, it will give you a lot more space. Um, that hose there, most of you won't have, that's part of my catch can. Uh, so yep, I'll do that and I'll come back. So engine cover off, we've removed that little uh, 10 mil bolt. Uh, we've peeled the heat shell back and now we have access to the wastegate, so if I can get it in here. Wastegate rod. Right, there we go, let's sort of see if there we go. All right, so first of all, need to make sure that that nut up the top um, is actually done up tight. And then to adjust the rod length, uh, let me see if I can zoom in here. Uh, essentially what we do is we remove that clip. Uh, I've found if you uh, use pliers to hold that little hook that you can kind of see on the left there and a flathead screwdriver, you can pull that off. That allows the rod itself to be pulled up. Um, we undo that lock nut that's just down there. Uh, and once that's loose, then we basically just rotate this entire head of the rod um, what I've found is half a turn of that, so if we were to flip it one way or the other, is about 0.1 volts. Um, Counterclockwise lowers the voltage and clockwise raises the voltage. So if you were 4 volts when cold and you needed to get it down to 3.8 volts, um, as I said, 0.1 volts per half a turn. So you would basically turn this rod, or the end of this rod here, um, one full circuit that'll be 0.2 volts lowering it. Uh, and uh, likewise, if you need to raise it, you basically just turn that whole head um, clockwise. So let's, um, yeah, let's have a look at that more. 
Okay, so uh, we removed that clip. I loosened that little nut here, and as I said, you just basically rotate this. Um, yeah, so for example, if I wanted to take it down, I would go counterclockwise, half a turn is down 0.1 volts. That's now down 0.2 volts. Um, count and clockwise is the opposite. Um, now, just as a little hint, actually easier to loosen that nut before you actually pull this up. Um, otherwise, you're gonna put a whole heap of pressure onto the rod itself and probably break something. So um, keep the clip on, keep it down, loosen that off get it to where you need it to uh, and then what we do is we put this back uh, here right, so that goes back down we put the clip back on and then we do up that little lock nut uh, and we are ready to go quite easy to do um, yeah definitely worthwhile all right heat shield back on we'll put the engine cover back on um, something worth raising as well is as you're adjusting that rod um, little end of the rod Basically, after you make half a turn or a turn, go back inside the car, plug in the OBD2 device, power cycle the car a couple of times, and check that the voltages are going the direction that you want. Um, as I said, easier to do when the car is cold because you're basically just aiming for 3.8 volts. Um, but also, once you've done that, check when the car is hot that it is around 3.6 to 3.7 volts. So, fairly easy job to do, as I said, 10 mil, remove that bolt, peel the heat shield back, take your engine cover off, remove that clip from the rod. Um, that'll allow you to pull the rod up, um, loosen off that nut, uh, and then adjust the direction that you need. Um, yeah, very easy to check. Um, if you don't have an OBD2 scanner, reach out to someone who has, plug it in, check it on your car. As I said, you want it to be 3.8 volts when cold, or 3.6 to 3.7 volts when hot. Um, and if yours is out, look, the ECU is probably managing it okay. It's probably adjusting, but it may result, result in uh, overboosting and weird boost conditions. Um, we've seen a car have limp mode uh, at the at um, Enfest last year. Didn't have this set properly, so very quick and easy to check. Um, and if it needs adjusting, just use those instructions. Um, if your car's under warranty and you've not made any mods to it, take it back to the service center and get them to do it. Um, or if you're not comfortable, reach out to one of the many uh, end communities or workshops, uh, wherever you are. So nice and quick to do, um, but surprising how many cars have this issue. Either it's a pre-facelift like mine that's had a facelift turbo installed or from stock from the factory. Very clear that Hyundai isn't checking these um, every time, so it's definitely worth worth checking that um, actuator rod. And um, maybe uh, if I can find the same values for the i20 and Kona, um, we can post it into the comments here. But yeah, hopefully helpful. Thanks everyone.